invite my coach here, Dr. Tarun Khan, directly to this uh, on board, and he is uh, going to have this uh, invited talk on this uh, biotechnology of endangered desert mussel plant that is Bugul, the journey from lab to end. And in the country wide, it is very much uh, uh, true or fact that whenever we uh, take the name of this Google, suddenly the name of Dr. Uh, Tarun Khan, that is integral, that is achieved the Google. So that is uh, very, uh, so nice of you, Dr. Tarun Khan, you are very much here as co chairperson. And uh, uh, there is no need to uh, go over the briefing or introduction of this Dr. Tarun Khan. He is a well world scientist in the ICPR system, you all know. He is working at Santi G and the group quantum research in the FRA Jodhpur. And there are various secularists uh, to his credit, like uh, this gold medal for undergoing this uh, when he was doing the BMC botany. And various uh, this uh, secularists like PhD fellowship and DBT Porsche uh, top fellowship and PP Ma Paul Memorial Golden Award. He received in the year 2016. And also received the Vice Murti Gold Medal Award in 2006. And he has published more than 40 research papers in various international and national journals. And he, as well as he guided 14 number of this uh, PhD scholars under this IFI AFI system. So this is all about the introduction and briefing about the my co-chairperson, Dr. Tarun Khan. And because of this constant of time, I am directly inviting to Dr. Tarun Khan for his presentation. Uh, now this is your responsibility uh, to take the charge. And for the rest of the session also, I uh, hand over go to uh, Dr. Tarun. So please, Dr. Tarun, go ahead. Uh, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Dr. Yogeshwar Mishra. In fact, it's uh, indeed a pleasure to co-chair the session with you. And uh, in fact, congratulations to the organizers, uh, particularly Dr. Haryom Saxena for articulating this uh, conference uh, so nicely. Uh, it's an online event and it's being uh, managed very well. Uh, very quality uh, publications and uh, presentations we have seen already. So uh, I won't take much time here. I would straight away dive into my talk because of the paucity of time. In fact, we are encroaching the lunch hour. So, yeah, so I hope uh, the presentation is visible to all. Yeah, great. So I'll be talking about uh, biotechnology of an endangered desert medicinal plant. It's called Google. Many people, when we who don't know, confuse it with the Google search engine. But this is actually Google, and we have been working on this plant for a very long time. But sorry for interruption, Dr. Tarun. Yeah. Can I take a leave because I have to attend a very important meeting in Jharkhand? Yes, yes, please, uh, please, uh, Dr. So can I take a leave? Yes, sure, With the please. permission of this organizing secretary also. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. So this plant, uh, we have been working at AFRI, uh, I mean, since when I joined and joined uh, the council and uh, the institute in 99. Uh, since then, it was my first project working on Google. And uh, we started looking at Google. We looked at this plant because it was an endangered plant and during the course of these last 20-25 uh, years this plant has from endangered it has become critically endangered now it is uh, a tremendously important medicinal plant and i would like to take you through the journey of what we have done uh, from the point of view of assessment from the point of view of saving this plant from uh, further getting extinct and what all we can do uh, further because it's so important even from the industrial point of view, from commercial point of view also. So I'll go into uh, first explaining a little bit about uh, what this plant is. Yeah, so uh, Google, the plant is basically called Comifora vitae and it belongs to the family Bursaraceae and uh, it is known for its oleogum resin. Now, if we talk of the distribution of this plant, it's very important to note that the center of origin for this plant is particularly the Indian subcontinent. And even in the Indian subcontinent, it's a very particular, it's a niche area that is a Thar Desert from where this plant originates from. This is the native place of this plant, though you may find it growing at other places in the country, but largely this is the center of origin of this plant. 
and if you look at the old scriptures and the old literature of ayurveda because ayurveda is the oldest medicinal uh, discipline and if you look at uh, kaidev nigantu which is a 15th century treatise we'll find out that it also uh, tells about this plant uh, as being uh, mostly grown in marubhumi that is desert now the importance of this plant is because of its oleogum resin which is called as gum googlu and this is uh, if we look at the ayurvedic literature from the past it is quite clear that in the past basically the, this plant what it does it it on its own also secretes uh produces the gum it exudes the gum on its own and during summers because of the summer heat there is gum exudation from the branches from the trunk as well as in winters particularly it has a papery bark and the bark cracks and from the cracks there can be some small amounts of gum oozing so these small amount of gum oozings were collected in the past and they were used as ayurvedic medicines now the story changes from here with the advent of uh, 20th century and 21st century when things started becoming commercially more oriented people started extracting this uh, gum by tapping and that is when the problem started but before that let me tell you what are the medicinal properties of this gum googlu uh, first of all the comifora vitae this particular plant there are 184 uh, species of comifora and the vitae species is the only one species which carries one important compound called google sterols now this google uh, gum googlu is rich in many different secondary metabolites but the chief principal active ingredient for which it is well known for is the google sterols there are two type of google sterols e and z which are basically the isomers now uh, this oleogum resin in ayurveda is known for its hyper cholesteremia i mean it reduces the cholest uh, the cholesterol uh, reducing properties are there then it also is helpful in the heart disease atherosclerosis rheumatism and also it is helpful in control of obesity for hundreds of years it has been used and uh, more recently people have found out that it also has got anti tumor properties and it can also check some forms of cancer people have worked on pancreatic cancer so this is a very it's like a wonder drug it is called a divya oshadhi in ayurvedic system of medicines but there are problems as i said till now it is very important plant but the problem happens because this particular plant the oleogum resin if you look at the ayurvedic preparations if you look at all the ayurvedic preparations it is now seen that it is known well established that around 20% of all ayurvedic preparations they basically require google gum extract in some forms and its consumption is around 300 metric tons per annum and that is an annual consumption which is quite high and to meet up that challenging high consumption amount people started tapping the main trunk of this plant and tapping definitely leads to a lot of secretion of gum but it also leads to death of the plant this is the biggest problem that after tapping unlike the rubber or the other acacias where you do tapping and you can do tapping manage tapping but if you do tapping on the main trunk of this plant the plant invariably dies and that is why this plant has found its place in the red data book and it is critically endangered uh, under the category of critically endangered and to meet up the big the second challenge here is that whatever drugs the ayurvedic industry uh is making using uh, the google gum is in fact the biggest challenge is adulteration sourcing pure forms of google gum is very very challenging because the plant is critically endangered the plants are not there to get the gum out so whatever we are getting we are uh, in india we are uh, in fact importing around 200 metric tons of this uh, google gum and largely it is coming from pakistan because uh part of the thar desert lies in uh, pakistan sindh area and from where uh, they are sending they are tapping and sending and we are buying it but it is largely adulterated with compounds like rosin which are very cheap 
So adulterating this compound, this uh, Google gum with compounds like rosin makes it financially also very lucrative for the people who are dealing in it. So getting pure forms of this um, Google gum is, is very difficult. Most of the uh, thing that is coming is totally, I mean, useless and having very low concentrations of Google sterone in it. So this is the major challenge. So what has to be done? What has to be done basically is to find ways, first of all, can we save this plant? Can we further do species restoration work? And can we produce this uh, the, the active ingredient that is Google sterones in laboratory? Can we, there are so many, uh, I mean, gray areas in the research on this plant. So at AFRI, we started working on this plant and we did several different aspects uh, in several over last 25 years, we have been working on this plant. And there are different aspects. We have done surveys and assessment of populations, collections of accessions. We have developed molecular markers for study of genetic fidelity as well as genetic diversity. We have developed tissue culture protocols. I'll come to that in a bit. And uh, we have worked a long time on its hardening and field establishment of the tissue culture raised plants. And we have also gone in to uh, set up bioreactor. We have also developed our own bioreactor uh, so that we can also have some uh, Google strong cell, uh, uh, the Google strong rich cell biomass, if we can produce that. And now recently we are also working on some uh, aspects of its pathway for the production of uh, Google strongs, which is also unknown right now, which is a big, a big area where nobody has uh, been able to pinpointedly tell what is the pathway of production of Google strongs. So first, I'll uh, talk a little bit about uh, the development of tissue culture protocol of Comifora vitae. Uh, tissue culture is justified here to work because the biggest problem with this plant is it is endangered for many reasons. It has been over exploited one, that is one thing, but its natural regeneration is very poor. Uh, it is reported that only 5% regeneration exists in nature and then it's over exploited, then there is death after tapping. So uh, we thought that tissue culture definitely is justified way of doing it. So it, it was in uh, 2002 that we started working on this plant uh, for developing uh, the tissue culture protocols. And we have in fact developed three protocols. After several years of research and several different projects funded by NMPB, funded by ICFRE, we finally were able to uh, make uh, three protocols. The first protocol was the micropropagation protocol from cotillinary node. Second protocol was from axillary shoot proliferation uh, from stem nodal segments, of course. And the third was from high efficiency uh, in vitro propagation protocol based on cyclic somatic embryogenesis. And not just this, we also tried to work out the economics of tissue culture because whenever you are trying to do tissue culture, people are going to question about the cost of doing tissue culture because cost sometimes can be prohibitive. So we worked out that and found that our somatic amyloderite plants were costing around 19 rupees per plant and the cotyledonary node or axillary bud based plants were costing 27 rupees. So the, the first AFRI protocol is uh, this where we use the cotyledonary nodes. It is not a very highly efficient protocol, but yes, it works. We were able to produce some plants of it. This was the very first protocol that we developed. Uh, in early uh, 2002, 3, 4, like that. Then uh, we also established field trials of the plants that came out. The second protocol was on uh, using axillary shoot proliferation from stem nodal segments. This was an important protocol because if we want to do cloning, if we have some plants which uh, like super genotypes having high Google sterone content, then this is a protocol for cloning which is fit and we have uh, in fact, also developed this protocol, which is a fine protocol working very well, reproducible. But the most important protocol, and I would say, which I feel is uh, the most important from the species restoration point of view is our third protocol. And this is, uh, this came out from our uh, research work, which was funded by NMPB. And this was a network project uh, having four institutions, AFRI, Kazri, Jodhpur, then and then um, there was DMAPAR, Anand, uh, and also uh, the NBRI. Uh, so these were the different institutions which were working on uh, this. And we worked on this tissue culture aspect. And we were able to produce a protocol in which we, we successfully developed somatic embryogenesis uh, protocol for this. And uh, you can see 
uh, this was a multi-stage protocol. It was a very complex protocol. And you can see at the bottom, uh, these are our uh, somatic embryos in different stages, starting from globular to heart shape to torpedo and to final mature uh, bipolar structures, which finally germinated. Uh, this is uh, the protocol. If we go into the details, I would, I mean, because of paucity of time, I'll just quickly go through it. It is a very complex protocol. Once we have the somatic embryos, this is this central section, which you can see here, which is now in the yellow block. This is the key of this protocol. This is a cyclic somatic embryogenesis protocol. And we were able to use, we were able to initiate the cultures once. And for three years, we were able to get plants out of this protocol because this goes on in a cyclic manner and we were able to rejuvenate uh, our cultures uh, using this and for up to nine successive times we were able to nine cycles of plant production we were able to achieve through this protocol and then we also did a germination and we went to establish a field trial in this and this is these are some of the pictorial representation of our protocol you can see here uh, different stages the flask full of somatic embryos maturing somatic embryos, germinating somatic embryos here, uh, and then finally hardening, which we in fact spent a lot of time on hardening of this plant, and finally establishment of field trials, and our field trials, 10 years old field trials are doing exceptionally well, a very high uh, success rate of plants, hardly any mortality. And then we also developed the genetic fertility testing using molecular markers. We tested genetic fertility and we found one very interesting uh, fact here, that we produce plants over three year uh, three years period starting from the primary cultures up to three years and during three years nine times we were able to produce nine cycles of plants we were able to produce and when we did uh, the dna fingerprinting we found that there was substantial variation that was happening variability was there from every every at every cycle we were able to get some variability so the variability was, is, is, uh, was increasing from the cycle 1 plants up to the cycle 9 plants. More and more variability was uh, there. And finally, we had uh, uh, I mean plants which were, which were not clones actually. And this is a good thing for a, for a plant which, which is endangered. We know that a plant which is endangered has a very narrow genetic base. And when the, their, the genetic base is narrow, then definitely we want more variability. We want to increase the genetic base. And this protocol, in fact, is helping us in that. So it's an ideal protocol for efficiently producing plants in large numbers and the plants which have some variability due to somatic embryo production, which is because of soma, uh, soma clonal variations and which was proven by our uh, these uh, DNA marker studies. Then uh, this was our tissue culture part. Coming quickly to the bioreactor part, this was our second part of the study. We thought that, well, we can produce plants, but what if we can produce the active ingredient, active principle in the lab? A lot of people have been working on these aspects. Google Steron, there is a group uh, from Dr. K.G. Ramavat in Udaipur who has also done a lot of work on this. But our ideology was a little different. Uh, we, in fact, started by, by establishing our somatic embryo-based cultures, but we thought that we should, if we are able to produce not the active ingredient. We, we never wanted to isolate the active ingredient, but we wanted to produce a nutraceutical. Can we produce a cell biomass that is rich in Google Steron? That was our ideology. With that, we started working on this uh, project funded by NMPB. Uh, and in this project, we tried to develop a method in which without even hormones, though the callus culture was established using hormones, but then we went hormone free. And we tried to study, uh, we established our cultures and uh, these cultures, as you can see here, uh, these cultures uh, are uh, in flask, shake flask, we were able to do cultures. And finally, from here, we, went, we were able to see that, yes, we can have production of cell biomass once initiated on hormone, but later on we can have it hormone free also, we can put very high uh, bulking of cells and then we went on to establish our bioreactor and under this project we procured a bioreactor we established a 5 liter bioreactor and uh, where we were able to get good uh, cell biomass production and here you can see some of these stages from 0 you can see at 0 day 
there is hardly any turbidity in the flask in the in the culture vessel of the bioreactor and by 28th day you can see it's all full of uh, the cell biomass it's totally turbid so this was our growth curve also as you can see and then we went on uh, we found that this was a uh, suspension culture a liquid culture bioreactor that we used but we thought that we have to filter out the cells which is a painstaking process which also is not good because cells it is uh, it, it is prone to contamination so we thought of developing our own fed batch solid state bioreactor solid culture bioreactor and using our bioreactor we were again able to produce without even submerging the cells we developed this bioreactor in which uh, we were able to have some cell biomass production in fact uh, my one of my phd students uh, shobha mera who is also going to present in this session uh, worked on this project and we were able to in fact do this uh, particular kind of uh, work and we also tested for presence of uh, uh, the google sterone and we found that google sterone z production was definitely there in hormone free cultures uh, also in embryogenic state so splc analysis uh, was done so this is something very very uh, encouraging for us that we have a technology now and we have in fact gone in for patenting we have filed a patent for our uh, own prototype bioreactor that we have produced it's a, uh, a bioreactor of solid culture bioreactor without uh, suspension state and uh, let's see the outcome we don't know what will happen with the that patent but we have filed a patent as of now and uh, well uh, to end my talk uh, i won't go into the details of further things in fact we are also working on uh, the functional genomics aspect of this uh, particular plant and uh, shobha is going to present uh, during this session uh, that part i won't touch because there will be presentation on that now we have a wide spread wide spread species uh, what i feel is that uh, this uh, plant is endangered and the road ahead is quite challenging and there are four five things they are still need uh, of the hour that we need to do uh, for this plant uh, to really get this plant into mainstream and to save this plant from extinction first is that we have to have widespread species restoration program we have a somatic a cyclic somatic embryogenesis protocol that we have developed that can very well be used plants can be produced in high efficiency and uh, this plant uh, this protocol can be easily used then we also need to do biochemical characterization of diversity we have done the bio, the molecular characterization of diversity in these plants but we still have to do the biochemical characterization of diversity in the plants coming out of uh, cyclic somatic embryogenesis then we also uh, need to uh, have projects on induction of polyploidy and their characterization we have developed projects scientists from afri dr anjali is uh, in fact working on that aspect uh, then uh, scaling up of bioreactor model we have a bioreactor we want to further scale it up into larger size uh, and uh, its reproducibility has to be checked we have to tie up with uh, the uh, industry partner and then the most important thing that we are trying to work out is the we still don't know the biosynthetic pathway of google sterone production so deciphering this pathway is another thing and we are using our genomic approach uh, for uh, study of this so there will be presentation on that and with this i would like to thank you and just to tell you i mean how important this plant is uh, the government of india has uh, the postal department the india post has in fact released a postage stamp on google thank you very much thank you uh, thanks a lot